Welcome. This is the introduction uh, session for nuclear fuel depletion. Uh, I'm going to be talking about how we perform fuel depletion calculations in reactor analysis software, uh, simulation software. <coughs> and particularly, I'm going to be focusing on uh, light water reactor analysis methods. These aren't uh, you know, exclusive to that application, but that's uh, you know, what most of the reactors are in the world. And certainly, that's what um, my experience is with. So, we have two main depletion calculations that we perform. Uh, the first one is at the lattice level, which is basically a two-dimensional slice of uh, fuel assembly. And usually that would look something like uh, this. Maybe you have a, your plot of K infinity versus burn up. And you start at a relatively high value. There's a little blip here. And then uh, occasionally, depending on if you have some burnable absorber, you'd have actually increase in reactivity and then gradual decrease. And so being able to precisely compute the curve here is, is what we're mostly concerned with in this uh, lecture. Now this will play into the reactor core depletion, which uh, you know, we usually do in a noble simulator with diffusion theory. And in that case, you know, the kind of results you're looking at, if you have your cycle time and versus for a PWR, you would have usually boron, uh, soluble boron concentration. And as you burn out the core, you know, you're starting at a higher value of boron, you're going to slowly decrease over, over time there. And you want to be able to predict as closely as you can uh, what the, what the um, amount of boron needed for, uh, to match uh, or you know, to keep the reactor critical. All right, so that hopefully sets a little bit of context of what we're trying to compute here. Now, how are we going to go about computing that? So I'm sure that you've done lots of uh, work on computing the neutron flux. Usually we write it with the psi here, or I should say fi. And for this case, I'm just going to use the diffusion equation. Usually for the uh, core calculations, we would be using diffusion. And for the lattice calculations, we'd be using transport. But just for the simplicity here, I'm going to be using the um, diffusion equation, uh, which you choose is not uh, particularly important for this conversation. So just write out the equation here. And you can see I'm writing the cross sections and the diffusion coefficient, showing explicitly that they're dependent on the, the number densities I of the fuel and the rest of the materials in the, in the core. And I'll say a little bit more about these these n quantities here, but they're a vector because you have uh, lots of different isotopes present. Um, so this is one half of the calculation. And let's draw a dotted line here to show that we're entering a different. The other half of the calculation is the nuclide number densities. Nuclide number densities, and you know usually or often we write these with capital N. And it's basically just a list of the nuclide concentrations. Um, so you might have N of U-235, N of U-238, and so on. Uh, you know, often you'll have hundreds of these, maybe thousands. We'll talk more about the actual, the actual list, how you come up with that as we go along here. So this uh, set of equations is going to be something like this, where we have the time rate of change of the N vector and um, then it's going to be equal to production, and I'm going to write that in terms of the flux times the vector here, minus L, the losses, um, is also a function of the fluxes. So P and L, some people put like a double line to, to say that they're a matrix. P and L are matrices, and they depend on the flux. So we need to get the, uh, the fluxes once we've solved the neutron. Uh, transport of the diffusion equation, we would carry those fluxes down here. And then once we've solved the, I should say this is known as the Bateman equation. And um, we would, once we've solved the Bateman equations, then we would carry up the um, neutron, or yeah, the number densities, and use those to compute the updated cross sections in the transport equation. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, so far I've just 
showing the the nuclide number densities as a list here, I'm kind of assuming that we're only talking about one fuel pit or one fuel uh, region. But of course, in reality, you're going to have lots of fuel pits, so you're going to have lots of these um, different vectors, but we won't worry about that at the moment. So let's talk about what goes into the Bateman equation. So we're looking for the terms and the production and the loss um, of, of that equation. So we've got uh, radioactive decay. Radioactive decay. We've got, you know, uh, the interesting thing about that one is it doesn't depend on flux, but that's the only only one that does not. We've got fission, and we've got neutron absorption. Neutron absorption, so this is usually N gamma, that's usually the dominant one, but you also have things like N2N, N2N, N2N P occasionally, N three N, N four N, and you know you can keep going. Uh, there's a there's a big list here. Truthfully, you know even these just the first one gets you most of the way. If you do the first, you know first two, that gets you even closer. Um, it, it obviously depends on which uh, which isotopes you're talking about. Um, there's a there's a few uh, oddballs out there that require some more obscure reactions. Anyway, um, for each of these. You have a radioactive decay, for instance. When you have that decay, you're going to lose one nuclide, but you'll gain another one. So it actually shows up twice in the uh, terms. So I'm going to pause here in the next in the next um, session. We're going to talk about what those production and loss terms actually are uh, in terms of equations.